Yeah. Hello. <clears throat> this is the introduction to the cooling tower lab. Our cooling tower apparatus is just what you, a smaller scale version of just what you would find in an industrial setting. And in fact, there's a cooling tower located just to the west of the nuclear science building that you can uh, probably see when you go out sometime. And then there's also a cooling tower just uh, like ours, except on a larger scale, behind the GRU building down on southeast, at the corner of Southeast Third Street and Southeast Fifth Avenue. Uh, before we get started with the analysis, I'd like to show you a schematic of the apparatus, go through that, and then we'll do the analysis like you'll do for the uh, cooling tower experiment. So here is the uh, a schematic. In the cooling tower experiment, over here, we have, down here we have um, a load tank in which water is heated by these two heating coils. The hot water leaves the load tank, goes through a pump where it can go either through the uh, control valve and flow meter or any excess fluid will, water will come back and go back into the load tank. Okay, it leaves the uh, flow meter, goes up, and it comes up here to the top of the cooling tower, which is called the cooling cap. The water is uh, spread down onto the top packing deck where the water is distributed evenly, and then it drops down onto the packing plates. The packing plates are just like little slats, like you, they, they look like almost what you'd see in a Venetian blind, and it, uh, the water spreads over the plates into a thin film which is exposed to air. The water comes in hot, and as it comes down by evaporative cooling, it cools down and then drops down into the basin as a cooler liquid where it goes back into the load tank and starts again. It gets reheated and it just continues to circulate. Okay, the air comes from the room and it goes through a fan, which is controlled by a damper. You'll see that later on in the uh, actual equipment apparatus demonstration. It comes in at one temperature and it goes up in a counterflow situation. It goes up through the plates and comes out at the top. Okay, we measure uh, temperature in several places. We measure the inlet air, uh, we measure the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature. We also measure at the outlet for the air the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature. And then we measure the temperature of the water just before it goes into the cooling tower. And then we measure the uh, temperature of the water as it goes up. And we can control the power to these heating elements by these three switches right here. We have a main switch, and then we can select either 0.5 kilowatts, 1 kilowatt, or we can turn them both on for 1.5 kilowatts. And you'll see this in the uh, demonstration a little later. We measure the temperature here by selecting the appropriate uh, indicator and then we can measure the, uh, we actually measure the difference in pressure between this point and this point and then have, there's a formula in your write-up that shows you how to convert that to mass flow rate. Okay, so now I want to move over here to the analysis. Or we'll go through the, uh, the steps that you're required to do for the uh, lab report. Okay, the first step says to write a one-page letter to the research group describing your experiment. Okay, just as usual, just follow the uh, format shown in the letter format and frequently asked questions document. Uh, the letter should not exceed one page, and in this particular uh, experiment, um, well, you just want to follow those instructions very carefully. Okay, the second step says to compute the air inlet and exit humidity ratio and relative humidity for each test condition. Okay, this is best done by uh, an example. And the way we do this is we measure the wet and dry bulb temperatures of the air entering the uh, cooling tower and, and exiting the cooling tower. You can get the, uh, uh, then we use either the psychrometric chart or the CAT2 software to get the humidity ratio and the relative humidity. I'm going to show you how to do this with an example. So I suggest that you use the uh, psychrometric chart to do this because that's what you're going to have on the exam. You won't have the CAT2 software to do this, but you could check your work with the CAT2 software. Okay, so I have a psychrometric chart here.
We'll see if I can focus this any better. Okay, it's going to be a little difficult to see, but you can follow along. There is a psychrometric chart on the website. Uh, there's one for uh, in a PowerPoint presentation. That's the one that you would normally want to view on a computer. And then there's a, um, a Word document that has it. You could use that for printing. Okay, so let's say, just for an example, let's say the dry bulb temperature, I'll write that on here. Uh, let's see where can I I'll write it on here. Let's say that the dry bulb temperature is 25 degrees C and the wet bulb temperature that you measure is 16 degrees C. Okay, we want to get the humidity ratio and the relative humidity. Okay, the horizontal axis is where we find the dry bulb temperature. So we go to the horizontal axis and we find 25 degrees C. And I've already marked it on here. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is just take a different colored pencil and draw a line going up, straight up from 25 degrees C. And we're going to look for the intersection uh, of that with the wet bulb temperature. The wet bulb temperature are these horizontal lines right here. You may not be able to see it on the video but you should be able to see it on your uh, psychrometric chart. So we find the intersection of the wet bulb temperature and the dry bulb. This is 25 degrees. Here's 20. 16 is right here where I've marked it. Okay, so that's the intersection. Now to find the humidity ratio, we'll just put a straight edge on here and we'll go straight across to the right. The humidity ratio is found on the right hand vertical axis. It's, the numbers are very close together, so you have to be very careful to pull off the right number to make sure you go straight across, and I've already done it. In this case, I found that the humidity ratio, which is omega, is equal to 0 .0078. All right, so for this particular wet and dry bulb temperature, we have the humidity ratio, 0 .0078. We're also asked to get the relative humidity. Okay, the relative humidity, and it's written on here, you, can see, you may not be able to see it, but it's written right here, are these lines that go like this. Okay, so we have to find the line that intersects, that crosses our um, intersecting point right here. And it looks like to me, we lucked out, it's right on the line, so we don't have to do any interpolation. So here we have 20%, uh, 30%, 40%. So our relative humidity ended up right on the line is 40%. Okay, now there's another term that we weren't asked for in this step, but it's one that you're going to need later. And that's the enthalpy per kilogram of dry air. All right, to get the enthalpy per kilogram of dry air, we take this point, that's on this, it's found on this axis right here. Okay, so maybe I can zoom in on that a little bit. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to follow these lines. You'll see that these lines are at an angle. We just go across like, go up like this, and we find where it is. And it looks like to me it's about um, 65 kilograms per kilogram of dry air. Now that's the enthalpy of the air vapor mixture divided by the mass of the air. In the denominator, we only have the mass of the air. And in lecture, we'll see why we do it that way, but that's how we, we get it. Okay, so that takes care of um, number two on your report requirements. Now I'm going to move over here to, uh, we'll do number three. Okay, number three says, using the measured inlet and exit conditions, Use a first law analysis to predict the water temperature at the exit for each test condition. Okay, so we know what the water temperature at the inlet is. We're going to measure that, but we're looking for, to, we want to be able to predict the uh, temperature at the exit. The way we're going to do that is we'll do a, an energy balance and a mass balance. So if we come over here to this board, 
Okay, I've drawn a control volume for the cooling tower. And we're going to start with a, um, a mass balance. So down here we have the air vapor mixture coming into the cooling tower. So the air coming in, I'm going to call M dot A1. And the, um, the water vapor coming in, we'll call M dot V1. Then coming out, we have M dot A2, the air coming out, and the mass flow rate of the vapor at 2 coming out. Now, we're not adding any air in the cooling tower, so the M dot A in is going to equal M dot A out, or M dot A1 equals M dot A2. But because we're going to do some evaporation here, M dot V2 is going to be greater than M dot V1. We also have water coming in from the load tank. So the water coming in will be M dot 3. M dot 4 is the water going out, but it's not the same amount of water that's coming in because some of it gets evaporated. So we need to find out what that evaporation rate is. Okay, so now we'll do a mass balance, and then in a minute we'll come back to this diagram and we'll do a, um, an energy balance. So for the mass balance, for the air, we have M dot A1 equals M dot A2 because no air was added. So we're just going to call that M dot A. For the water mass balance, all right, what we have coming in was what was coming from the low tank, M dot 3, plus M dot V1 that's coming from the atmosphere. Going out, we have M dot 4 and M dot V2. Okay, now, you know from the, from the definition of the humidity ratio, we could write the M dot of the vapor in terms of M dot of the air. So we have M dot 3 plus the humidity ratio at 1 times the mass flow rate of the air equals the mass flow rate of the, at 4, which is going out of the water, plus the humidity ratio at 2 plus the mass flow rate of the air. Okay, during the experiment we're adding water to keep the level of the tank constant. So that makeup water, we're not asked for that in this experiment, but the makeup water would equal M dot MU, I called it, and that'll equal M dot 3 minus M dot 4, which we just showed was uh, M dot A times omega 2 minus omega 1. Okay, so that's our mass balance. We need that to do the energy balance. So let's go over here to this diagram. Okay, so this will be our energy balance. And it turns out that all the energy is in the form of enthalpy. So coming in, we have, we have M dot V1 times H of V1 plus M dot A times H of the air. But, as you know from lecture, we can abbreviate this or we can rewrite this as uh, M dot A, and we're going to call it H1. So this is the enthalpy for the air vapor mixture per unit mass of air, so we multiply that times the mass flow rate of the air. So what's coming in then at this point is M dot A H1. Okay, going out, we have M dot A H2 by similar um, reasoning. Okay, we have water coming in, so that would be M dot 3 times H3, and coming out, we have M dot 4 H4. Okay, so we take what's coming in, which is at 1 and 3, that has to equal what's going out at 2 and 4. So our energy balance will look like this. Okay, this is the enthalpy coming in from the air vapor mixture. Enthalpy in of the water coming in from the load tank. This is enthalpy out of the air vapor mixture. And this is enthalpy out of the water going out. 
Okay, well, we're, we're looking for temperatures, so what we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation for H4, and then we're going to assume that the water is saturated, and we can look up in the steam tables the temperature associated with that enthalpy right there. So I solve this equation for H4, and we get this equation. Well, we know everything in this equation except for uh, M.4. Okay, so we have to solve that. Well, we solved that from our mass balance that we had just a minute ago. We plug that in, and we get H4 equals this expression right here. Okay, so in the numerator, we have, uh, we're going to write in terms of M dot A, which we know from the experiment. We can look up H1, or we get H1 and H2 off the psychrometric chart. M dot 3, uh, we know from the experiment. H3, we look up in the steam table. And then down here in the denominator, uh, we know these values, and we get omega-1 and omega-2 off the psychrometric chart. Take that value of H4, go to the steam table for saturated liquid, and look up the temperature associated with that, and then that gives you uh, the answer to number 3. And we'll do that for each test condition. All right, number 4 asks us, let's go over here, Number four asks us to predict the amount of heat dissipated for each condition. Okay, so we're looking for the amount of heat uh, dissipated from this evaporative cooling. How much heat are we pulling out of the water? Okay, well, the energy that's dissipated is going to equal the uh, energy in of the water. We have a certain amount of water uh, energy associated with the water coming in minus the energy of the water coming out. Okay, so... This energy dissipated, which we'll call heat, would equal m dot 3 times h3 minus m dot 4 h4. Okay. Um, we know those values. We could also do it by with our energy balance. We have this expression right here. We could do it uh, in terms of the m dot of the air. We could write m dot a, which we know times H2 minus H1. So we should be able to do it with either one of these equations. And do this for uh, each setting. Okay, finally, number five, question number five asks us to provide sample calculations for each calculation. This should include your first law analysis in steps three and four above, as well as any other calculations. So if you put the uh, sample, if you wrote out the equations in step two, that's okay. But in this step, you actually want to show the numbers, you want to show the units for at least one of the conditions. Actually, one condition would be sufficient to show this is how I did it. This gives the, uh, the reader, the grader, whoever, uh, confidence that you knew what you were doing. So you go through, write in your numbers, the actual numbers, write in the units, cancel everything out, and show how you got your answer. Uh, be very neat. Write your equations in a nice linear fashion, just like you would see in any textbook. You know how in the textbook they go write an equation, the next one goes underneath it and underneath it. Okay, finally, uh, we want you to include the original data. Number six, ask for the original data. All right, as long as it's neat, you can use the handwritten sheet that you got in the lab, or you can type it up and include it. Uh, as a printed document. That's fine. It does not have to be in your original handwriting. It just has to be your original d data. And be clear, be neat, and include the units. Okay, now we're going to go to the um, lab and do the uh, apparatus demonstration. This is the cooling tower experiment. In the cooling tower, Experiment. We have water entering a column up here at the top. The water flows down over these plates where it's cooled, goes back through the column and back into our water tank. We have air that enters at the bottom of the column and exits through the top. First I'll describe the water uh, flow path. The water start, starts in a low tank where it's heated by several heating elements. It goes through a control valve which controls the flow of the water, goes through these tubes, enters up here at the top of the column, called the column cap, 
the water is distributed evenly through the, over this top packing deck. The water then drips down over the plates, forming a thin film. The water, some of the water evaporates, cooling the water due to evaporative cooling. Then it drops down into the basin, where it is returned to the load tank for reheating. The air path goes through this uh, air damper over here, through a fan, where it goes through an air flow meter, and then it enters the, uh, or it's measured through the, by the air flow meter, it enters at the bottom of the column and exits through the top, through a hole up here at the top. Okay, we're going to make several measurements during the experiment. For the water, we're going to measure the temperature of the water as it enters the tank up here, and we're going to measure the temperature of the water as it exits the tank just prior to going into the, uh, the low tank. For the air, water, uh, the air vapor mixture, we're going to measure the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature prior to entering the tank, and then we're going to measure the uh, wet and dry bulb temperatures up here at the top as it exits the tank. We'll use the wet and dry bulb temperatures in, uh, along with the psychrometric chart in order to measure the difference in enthalpy between the uh, uh, incoming water vapor, uh, the air vapor mixture, and the exiting water vapor mixture. Okay, before you start the experiment, make sure that the uh, wicking material on the wet bulb uh, thermocouple is wet. If it's not, have your or actually have your TA check this and make sure that if it's not wet, you can wet it or she. All right. So to conduct the experiment, first we turn on the main switch and we set the water flow to the desired uh, reading, which is described in your write-up. We do that over here with this control valve. I'm going to turn it off so you can hear me better. And then we're going to set the heating element to whatever the uh, desired uh, power rate is. We can select either by pushing this down, we can select 0.5 kilowatts, we can select 1, point, or 1 kilowatt, or we can push them both down and get 1.5 kilowatts. In order to set the airflow rate, we, before we turn it on, the fan on, uh, we're going to set the this little ruler here so that the manometer is on some number, some even number. Then we'll turn the fan on and we'll adjust the damper so that we get 10 millimeters mercury difference in the air flow rate. Okay. Uh, during the experiment, we want to ensure that the water level stays above the minimum level. You can't see it, but there's a mark on here that shows the minimum level. If it glows, as it approaches that minimum level, and it will because we evaporate a lot of water, just use uh, this big, uh, graduated cylinder and add water to the tank right here, like that. Okay. Then follow the instructions for the experiment that are uh, described in your write-up. You're going to have to wait a while between each power condition for the uh, system to come to steady state. It may take 10 minutes for that to happen. Okay, and you'll do this for several different uh, water flow rates and power settings. At the end of the experiment, turn all the switches off and, uh, and you're done. I suggest that you, when you come in here that you've gone through the calculations very carefully that are described in the write-up to make sure that you've done the experiment right. If you don't do that, there's a good chance that you will make a mistake and you'll have to come back and redo the experiment. So set up a spreadsheet with the equations so that you can enter values. You'll need your textbook also because you'll, and the psychometric chart because you'll need that to enter some values. Come with all that ready. Uh, if you do that, you'll do a nice job on the experiment and uh, probably take you the full period to do this one. And that's about it. Thank you.